all, um, quick show of hands. How many of you here send marketing emails to your customers? I'm in the right place. <laughs> Um, so, um, I, I want to take you through some actual findings um, that I've got from research that I've been doing um, over the past six months. Um, so, first of all, um, why is um, email important? Why care about it? There's 270 million emails sent every day. The average person receives over 100 emails in their inbox. Um, for most of you in the room, I expect that email's driving more sales than any other channel. Uh, for most of the retailers that I work with, uh, between 10 and 50% of their um, overall sales are from email. Um, it is the most cheap, cheapest um, cost-effective um, marketing channel um, for most of you. Um, however, engagement rates are declining. So um, over the past few years, I've seen that actually open rates are going down, click-through rates are going down. Um, so it just makes that channel a little bit harder. Um, and um, part of the reason is because we're all getting a lot more in um, Well, our inboxes are full. We're getting a lot more um, emails. Uh, we have to think a little bit more about which ones we open and which ones we don't. So all, all that aside, um, some of you are probably spending less on email and spending less time on email than any other channel. Um, I've worked with retailers who literally um, rush to get an email out the door. They don't care about what time it's sent. It gets sent the minute it's done and the minute someone's put a subject line to it and sent out to their whole audience exactly the same email. Um, some of you are actually ignoring your subscribers. You may not know, but you are. Um, and um, a, lot of, a lot of retailers are treating every single subscriber exactly the same. So with a one-size-fits-all uh, marketing approach. Um, so just to give you a bit of background on me, um, I um, well, started off in the industry about 16 years ago. Um, I was working at um, Orvis, um, country clothing retailer, um, and um, I was um, heading up their UK marketing. Um, after six years there, um, I went to Mortu, um, who most of you in the room will have heard of, um, some of you from there, um, and um, was working, um, so they're a data marketing agency, um, and I was working with clients actually pulling insight out from their data um, and also heading up the email proposition there. Um, so for 15 years, I had access to a, a lot of data. So Google Analytics, email service providers, um, so all kind of email click-through data. Um, I was doing kind of quite a lot of benchmark stuff. Um, and um, I decided um, earlier this year to kind of take the leap and um, leave, leave all that behind and set up a, as, on my own as a consultant. Um, at that point, or literally just as I was leaving Morty, I suddenly had this panic and thought, I'm not going to have access to all this data. Um, so I'm not going to be able to kind of from day one, been able to pull this insight out and actually uh, be able to tell kind of clients up to date information. Um, so I sat there and thought, right, OK, what can I do that I'm actually doing some research, giving clients um, some actual insight um, and also don't necessarily need access to that open and click through data? So what I did is I created a new um, Gmail email address. Um, I signed up to 200 retailers' emails. Um, so went onto their website and signed up to receive their emails. That was the end of February. Um, I then let my email inbox kind of clog up. Um, and um, then after kind of six months, um, I actually um, logged, logged all the emails and looked at actually what was happening. Um, I've not opened or clicked on those emails. I've not bought from any of those retailers using that email address. So I may have been on some of their websites with the same laptop, but I haven't actually been on there as a result of clicking on their email to, to the website. Um, and during that time, 11,000 emails arrived in that inbox. Um, quite a lot to log. Um, so here are a list of um, just some of the, um, some of the retailers. Um, so some of you will um, find yourselves on there. Um, I did try and um, include some um, kind of smaller ones um, as well as um, the bigger retailers. Um, a lot of research that's been done in the past around this has been, um, has been the bigger um, or the high street retailers. So I wanted to make sure that it wasn't kind of the top 200 retail brands, uh, but it was kind of a mix, a mix across the board. 
Um, so when I went to the website and signed up, um, straight away, well, during that journey, 23% of them had an email capture. Um, and 44% of them, it popped up immediately. So before I even had chance to see what the brand was about, look at the product, look what was on the homepage, straight in my face was the email pop-up. Um, I'm a big believer that they can work, so I'm not, I'm not kind of dissing them, but um, actually them appearing immediately, um, I, was, I was quite shocked at how that high that was. Um, and then of all the retailers, 16% offered an incentive to sign up. So in some cases, a percentage off, uh, in some cases, a um, enter a competition to win, et cetera. Um, so then what happened? So I'm actually still waiting to hear from 14% of those retailers. So not heard anything um, kind of since. 49% um, emailed me instantly. So uh, went st um, going, looking straight at um, Gmail, um, it was the time that I actually um, subscribed. Um, and then 80% um, of the retailers that emailed me, the first email I got from them was a welcome. So then talking about the welcome, what, we saw, well, what I saw was 64% of those retailers sending a, sending a welcome campaign sent an actual series. So multiple emails all kind of welcoming me into the brand. 38% um, sent three or more in that series. So, and during that welcome journey, 52% of retailers gave me some kind of um, incentive to get me to buy. Um, however, 16% of those didn't offer it on the, on the first step of that journey. It was later on in that program. So obviously trying to get me to buy without that discount to begin with. Um, and then 31% um, of those people sending the um, series um, actually carried on sending me their business as usual. So if I looked at my inbox in the first couple of weeks, it was kind of crowded with mixed messages from them. Some of it was telling me about the journey and then others were just telling me about special offers. And in many cases actually contradicted the offer that they tried to um, send me to get me to buy. So with those, 11% um, actually asked me what I wanted to hear about. Um, so um, many sold kind of multiple, multiple categories. Um, and here are kind of some of the examples of um, kind of the preference pages, uh, what people asked me um, about. And that was, I had to do it. It wasn't a kind of a, a second step, do you want to do that? For, for many of them, it was actually uh, forcing me into it. Um, however, when I look at all those emails um, from that 11% of brands, only 26% of the emails I received over the, over the six months were relevant to what I asked. And in many cases, this isn't saying, tell us your interests, it's actually telling us, tell us what you want to hear about. So I'm blatantly not ticking some categories, yet I'm still receiving emails. And just to give you an example, this is Shu. Um, so this was one month, this is the emails that I got from them, and I signed up for kids. Um, only kids, didn't tick men or women's. Only three of the emails I received that month were actually related to kids. And over the course of the six months, only 10% were relevant to what I asked about. 90% were not relevant, wasn't interested. And actually, because 90% weren't, it's not going to encourage me to look to see if the email they've sent me this week is the 10% um, to what I actually asked. Um, so, optimising your sign-ups. So think about the mechanism. So um, if you're using a pop-up, um, again, not dissing them. Um, so be, be careful it's not impacting uh, performance. Um, so last year, um, I actually worked with a retailer. And what we actually saw is the introduction of that data capture pop-up actually decreased the conversion. So they got a shed load more of emails through the door, but actually people were leaving the site. Um, so with that in mind, look at the stats, test it, show it, not showing it. And they're, they're clever, so you can put rules in place. Only show them to people that are not recognised. Don't show them immediately. So at least give them a chance to look to see what your website is about and what you sell. Um, and then actually um, don't show them every single time they land on the website. Um, so um, maybe every two, every two weeks or um, a, a longer where you actually um, pop, pop that up again. Um, and for God's sake, check your data capture points. Look at where you're asking for email addresses. 
is it triggering free to your ESP? And are you sending them emails? So some big brands forgot about me. Some emailed me three, four months down the line, my first email. So I'd, often, I'd, I'd obviously been found under the table somewhere with a load more of email addresses. And then they decided to add me into their campaigns. Um, make sure it's kind of all going through and, and check all, there'll be several touch points um, amongst, amongst your website. So um, then, so should you do an incentive? Should you be like one of the 16% that offer the promotion to get your email address? Um, there's, not a, um, there's not an answer to this, um, but look to see what your competitor's doing. Um, so previously, I worked with a cycle brand, and um, three of their competitors were all offering £5 off for signing up. Um, so it made sense for them to do that. They were selling the same products as the other brands. If you're not going to offer that, then actually uh, people in that kind of market, they, they look elsewhere. So that's quite important. Um, and are you offer driven? So if you are always offering out there, so your normal emails are 10, 20% off, don't not offer anything on your welcome or don't offer anything worse because people aren't then going to give you your email address. You need to, you need to give them that reason to give you it. Um, and think about the language you're using. So it might not just be about discount. I've tested it head to head. And sometimes when the brand are, are, are talking about actually um, enter um, or, or give us your details to um, actually find, be the first to know, uh, find out about what we do, um, et cetera. There's, there's language that actually can help capture. So welcome. So thank your customers. Welcome them to the brand. You've got to think that some of these that have given your email address, especially if it was a pop-up that instantly appeared, might not know what you sell or might know any one of the items that you sell. Introduce them to the brand, tell them about you, offer social proof, um, get that kind of welcome journey in there to try and get them to convert and make that purchase. Um, and don't bombard them from day one. So if you're sending them two business usual emails in the, the first three days and also a welcome email, they're going to start actually thinking about whether they actually either unsubscribe or just delete and not even bother reading future ones. Um, and the preference center. So I... I'm a believer of preference centers at the right time. So if someone goes to unsubscribe from your email, at that point, try and encourage them to actually um, carry on on your email list and actually uh, select what they want to hear about. However, don't ask customers or prospects what they want to hear about if you're not going to do anything differently about it. And if you sell multiple categories, it's probably going to be hard to actually have a different strategy for each different category type. Um, so for example, Zara, over the course of the six months, only sent me seven or eight emails. Because again, I asked about kids. And obviously, they don't send as many emails about kids as anything else. So if they hadn't have asked me that information up front, they could have then um, sent me emails about other things or actually thought about potentially putting some dynamic content in and doing more frequent um, kid stuff on there. Um, and you don't need to ask. If you've got um, so some technology, so um, you can get browse information. So if someone, for example, is looking at menswear, they're interested in menswear. So use that information instead of actually asking them, because they may not actually tell you the, the truth. They may tick the top one. So we all know that survey information isn't always the, um, the best data to go at. Um, so how many emails did I receive during that time? Um, so almost a half. Of, of retailers emailed me um, far, well two or three times two or three times a week. Um, I the first two months, Sports Direct emailed me on average thirteen times a week. <laughs> Gap were not too far behind. Marks and Spencer emailed me a welcome. Haven't emailed me since. <laughs> So some of the big brands are actually the, the examples of brands that do it well are, are probably brands that you haven't heard of. Um, so um, and 13 percent um, have actually emailed me less than less than once a week. Um, so although there's a lot of brands that actually don't want to bombard uh, their customers, emails the norm. People are used to receiving frequent frequent emails. Um, so um, the, the answer for you may be different as it is for another retailer, um, but there's probably, you could probably get away with emailing more than once a week. Um, so it's all, it's all about testing. So I've, um, I've worked with brands who have tested it and actually have found the more, more emails they send up to a point um, drives, 
drives the um, right amount of revenue. Um, but however, over time, people are less likely to be engaged with so much um, emails crowd in their inbox. So when did I get the emails? Golden question, or golden answer. Um, what time and what day of week should you send an email? The most common day was Thursday, although more spread out than I thought it was going to be. And I got most of the emails, um, in, well, the larger proportion, in the morning. Um, I'm guessing most of you commuting into work, check your emails, on the way in, read them. Show of hands of how many people buy on a busy train with not much signal going into work. You're not going to. So if it's all about conversion and getting that sales out of people, um, it's potentially not the best time, of the, um, best time to um, send. Um, what I recommend you doing, this might be a bit small, is actually looking at your email traffic actually at Google, on Google Analytics and actually looking not just at when um, the traffic's coming in, but when people are converting. Um, so this client actually sent most of their emails at thurs Thursday at 8 o'clock. Um, so most of the traffic from the email came Thursday, 8 o'clock. Um, however, conversion rate was a lot lower than Thursday at 11 o'clock. So they've changed their strategy. They did some testing, but actually Thursday 11 o'clock then won over sending it. So, and they're seeing more, more sales um, as a result. So birthday. 20% asked me for my birthday. 13% said I had to give it if I wanted to receive emails from them. Um, and of all the retailers that asked me for my birthday, only 23% said happy birthday to me. So... And, and of, the, of the ones that said happy birthday, most of them came, came with an offer. And um, over half of them sent me an offer that was worse than the offer I received in their business as usual email that week. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> so um, if you've got it, well, first of all, don't make people give it. Some people are sensitive, especially if you asked for, asked for the year of birth. Some people don't want to give it. And it's that extra piece of information that might stop people submitting their email address. If you've got it, don't ignore it. So where I've seen clients who have got it, they've actually seen the best response rate from, well, other than abandoned basket, um, really great response rates and conversions um, from birthday, um, especially if it's something that actually feels like a reward. So if you're giving me £10, or you're, you're giving me something, um, I'm more likely to get that nice feeling than if you're just giving me 10% off. Um, so, and consider that multiple stage. Um, so uh, Bowdoin do it nicely where they email you ahead of your birthday, they email you on your birthday, and then they remind you, you're not going to have another birthday anytime soon, so use your offer or lose it, basically. Um, so recognising my behaviour. So during that six months... Um, some of the brands recognised I did nothing. So some actually said, we miss, we miss you. Is it something we said? Can we keep in touch? Um, so um, whereas, um, and actually, even cleverer, some people recognised I went on their website. They sent me emails, um, which actually uh, showed me products I was looking at, um, and they recognised my cookie had been on that website, and that was my email address, and then um, sent, me, um, sent me the message. Um, the other extreme, I would not consider myself to be loyal to any of these brands. I didn't do anything. I, I ignored them for six months. Um, however, I'm the best customer. I'm the most loyal customer. I'm their favourite customer. So I, I'm a believer of lo loyalty, but make sure someone's loyal. So talk to somebody in, in language they won't look at and go, I can't be their VIP. Um, so because it actually um, damages the credibility of your brand. So six months on, 34% have reduced the number of emails they've sent me. So um, some are just emailing me um, compelling um, offers uh, when there's kind of promotions on. Um, but there's a lot of the, the kind of recognising that I'm not kind of going in there and opening all the time. 66% are still emailing me. Some, gap, are emailing me seven times a week. So... And I'm a VIP most, uh, probably three times a week. Um, so, um, and if, well, recognise people's behaviour. If they're not opening, they're not clicking, they're probably not going to do it next time unless you do something different. 
So, and what's quite good here as well, if you've got their email address, there's other ways you can target these people. Um, so you can use custom audiences um, on things like Facebook, Google, um, to, target those, to target those people a, a different way. So if you're not necessarily at the top of their inbox, you might actually be um, appear when they uh, log into their Facebook or whatever. So, although think about how you got their email address in the first place. If you got it at a show and you were offering a competition to win something amazing, you're probably going to get less engagement than if somebody actually had to find your um, email sign-up. Just a few other interesting things. Um, in the first month alone, 18% of the emails I received went into spam. So um, what I would recommend is look at where your most popular email clients are for your recipients, make, well, create some email addresses and see if your emails are going to, into spam. If they are, work with your email service provider on how to, how to prevent that. Because they're, um, it's Google hide it. It's lower down. I'm potentially not even going to look at those emails. So, um, and then it, it kind of reduced as time went on. Um, so it was 11% the following month. So, but that's kind of quite key. Um, there was only a little bit of personalization, uh, which surprised me, given I gave, I gave more details, um, well, more to a lot more than kind of 2%. Um, and um, nobody, well, 10 emails out of the 11,000 um, actually uh, personalise the uh, super subject line. So the um, line of text that basically goes under the subject line. Um, and um, you, can, you can do that nowadays with most email service providers. Um, and 5% of in, um, emails had an emoji in there. I'm not telling you to do it on every email, but where it's relevant, at least test it. Um, so key takeaways... Um, first of all, um, well, review your process. Um, is it working? Are you emailing people? Are they going into a black hole? Um, so what discount are you giving and how are you capturing it? Um, welcome your subscribers. Um, so think about um, they've gone to the effort to give their email address. It might have only taken them a few seconds, but that, for that fraction of a second, they were interested in hearing from you. Um, so actually be relevant in, in how you talk to them. So And thank them. Um, and um, also uh, remember that they don't necessarily know everything about your brand. So Emma Bridgewater do a nice kind of um, four-stage process where they start off by um, well, welcoming you, uh, then they give you a tour of the factory, then they, um, they tell you a bit more about them, and then um, last in the journey, they offer you 15% off your next purchase. And during that three-week process, they don't bombard you with a lot of other kind of um, emails at the same time. Um, and lastly, and uh, probably the most important one, be relevant. So um, use the information that you've got about them. Um, if you're not, you potentially could be at risk with the GDPR next year, that you, you've got birthday and you're never using it. Um, so for example, um, and take notice of the engagement. Um, try do something clever and smarter to kind of tip them over the edge, get them engaged and, and, and get them to buy. Um, so yeah, thank you very much.